Hello. In this video, I'm going to teach you a little bit about high bypass turbofan jet engines. But first, I want to show you a couple of pictures at the pylon right near the exhaust, in line with the exhaust. You can see that there's modifications of the pylon at the just above the exhaust and behind it where there are nozzles. This is perfect. This is a perfect place for chemicals to be ejected out of an aircraft right into the exhaust stream to make it look like it's a normal trail for a jet engine for commercial jets. So just look at the materials um, near the nozzles. It's a modified pylon. The materials not the original color, it's modified and it's an add-on. I have checked drawings and this is not an original kind of modification or, or uh, equipment for a new aircraft. This is one of the places that is very likely that we are being sprayed from. So now having said that Let's look at a large bypass, high bypass turbofan engine, jet engine. And that's what I'm going to be talking about here. Take a look at some of the pictures. And at some point here in the video, I'm going to stop showing pictures of the engine and I'm going to show you the chemical trails. So you just listen and look at the trails in the picture and you'll see that there's no way that a high bypass turbofan jet engine in a commercial aircraft or large military aircraft can produce any of these trails. High bypass turbofan engines do not create condensation trails and here is a bit of an explanation why so don't be fooled long or short if you see a trail coming out of a jet with very few exceptions it's an intentional toxic chemical aerosol also known as chemtrails it is also sprayed over populations and that is an inhumane act on a population and it is a crime against humanity. Police chiefs take notice and act to protect. So you think those lines in the sky are contrails? Think again. The trails being left in the sky by large aircraft cannot possibly be condensation trails or contrails. Once this is understood, then we are left with the ominous question, what do these trails consist of? High bypass turbofan jet engines do not create condensation trails. The ratio of the air to the exhaust is much too high to facilitate the formation of condensation because the majority of the air expelled from the back of the engine is not combusted. It is passed through the fan and simply blown out the back without mixing with any fuel at all. It's almost as if it's a propeller plane and using the jet turbine as the engine doing the, making the propeller turn around. So let me say that again. The ratio of air to exhaust is much too high to facilitate the formation of condensation because the majority of the air expelled from the back of the engine is not combusted. It is passed through by the fan and simply blown out the back without any form of mixing with fuel or, or any form of exhaust because of that. Turbine engines are the power plant for these high bypass turbofans. Turbine engines are used in other applications besides powering jets. They are also used to power helicopters, yet we never see trails coming from helicopters, and the reason is simple.
turbine engines almost never produced condensation trails. In the turbofan jet engine, notice the large ratio between the bypass fan diameter and the core part of the engine? It's huge. Every condition at the exhaust output of the engine is wrong for contrail formation. The formation of condensation trails requires high vacuum, cold temperatures, and high humidity. However, the output side of a jet engine contains mostly outside air that has been pushed through the engine by the large ducted fan, the, by the bypass fan. The ducted fan is the set of spinning blades that you see when you look at the front of the engine. So let me repeat. The output side of the jet engine contains mostly outside air that has been pushed through the engine by those blades. This high pressure at the output of the engine is contrary for the formation of condensation trails because of the pressurized air and pressurized air has the ability to hold much more water in suspension without producing condensation. Only a fraction of the air that enters the engine is taken in by the turbine engine. The air is mixed with jet fuel, essentially kerosene, it's combusted, and then exits the engine under very high pressure and high temperature. Condensation formation requires a decrease in ambient air pressure to form, but the output of the turbine is under very high pressure, which prohibits the formation of condensation trails. Physics also tells us that condensation forms when air is cooled. But since the exhaust of the turbine engine within a jet is very hot, condensation formation is once again prohibited. Hot air can hold much more water without producing condensation. Furthermore, the ratio of air to fuel used in high bypass turbofan engines is as high as possible. Lots of air, but relatively little fuel so as to keep engines efficient and cost-effective. So the reduced amount of fuel in this ratio results in a lack of water in the exhaust. And this is yet another reason that high-bypass jet turbofans cannot produce condensation trails. In short, the more efficient the engine, the less fuel it uses per unit of air moved, and this renders the high bypass turbofans virtually incapable of producing condensation trails unless they use water injection which is extremely rare today. Simply said, every condition that is necessary for contrail formation is absent in the high bypass turbofan jet engine. Let me say that again. Every condition that is necessary for contrail formation is absent in a high bypass turbofan jet engine, and that is on all commercial aircraft. So, commercial aircraft cannot be putting out a contrail.